Hello, welcome back to my Direwolf 1.6 mod pack exploration tutorial series. So, I just got back from doing a bunch of mining, and as you can see, I've got tons of stuff in here, and I've got tons of stuff in my white backpack, and I have tons more stuff I already put in the sorting system. But the sorting system, with a lot of stuff, is very, very slow. So, I'm not sure what else we're going to do today yet, but um, I thought I would make some speed upgrades to show you how you can improve the speed of the sorting system from extra utilities. So, we need to make these speed upgrades, which require four blocks of redstone, a couple pieces of gold, and some gold nuggets get you four. Not a very expensive recipe, really. So, once we have the speed upgrades, if you can see the transfer node, you can right click on that to bring up its interface. So there we are, we now have four speed upgrades, I, I think. So, and you can see how fast it's pulling out those fences now, versus if I take these upgrades out and put in a stack of 64, you can see it's quite a bit slower. But it's really much faster once we get the upgrades in there. Actually, I don't want that in there. That's part of my four I destroyed. So, okay, there we are some nice speed upgrades from extra utilities. I was sitting here waiting for this stuff to go in here and it just I couldn't empty all my inventories because it was just taking too long for it to figure everything out. It was very irritating, but this while not perfect still, it's much much better than it was before. In fact, it's almost done really. So Okay, so like I said, still not quite sure what we're going to do this episode, but I want to show you that so that when you come back from mining, if you have a large sorting system, that is how you make it faster with extra utilities. I'll be back once I think of a topic for this video. Okay, I'm back. So after doing all that mining, I noticed that my Tinker's Construct tools, all my stone ones, keep breaking quite a lot. And, you know, that's not really a surprise. They're stone tools, not really designed to be long-lasting. But So I thought it's time to give up the stone tools, go to metal tools, make them a little bit faster, a little bit more durable. And in fact, we're going to add to them even more durability by adding a flux modifier. Now, a flux modifier is basically, for durability, they use energy. And they are compatible with Thermal Expansion 3, so they can use redstone flux. So, the first thing we need to do is build an energetic infuser. This is what will charge our tools. For that, we need a redstone energy cell frame, two redstone transmission coils, a machine frame, two copper, and a redstone reception coil. Reception coil, that's gold and redstone. Transmission coil is silver and redstone. Need two of those. The machine frame, gold, glass, and iron. The leadstone energy cell frame is lead, redstone block, and glass. And that should be everything I need to get this. Okay, so there's our energetic infuser. So we need to go put it somewhere it gets power. So I'll put it right here at the end, or I would if I had any more hardened energy conduits. Hmm. Okay, I also need to get the materials to build a flux capacitor. So let me put this on pause. I'll go get the materials to make that, make some more hardened energy conduits, and be right back. Okay, so I got the hardened energy conduit. I can put it right there. We'll place the energetic infuser on top 
and it's charging up. All right, now we need to go make our tools. So I've already made the components for our new Tinker's Construct tools. I'm going to make an axe, a lumber axe, a shovel, an excavator, and a hammer. I'm going to make everything I had just stone. We're going to make it out of metal. and I'm making them all out of alumite. I don't need to make them out of manulin because our durability is going to come from the flux. So we don't need to make it out of manulin. And alumite, it has good enough speed and mining ability, so I'm not concerned about that. So let's start with our hammer. We need a hammer head, we need two plates, and we need an iron t or a tool rod. I'm sorry, a tough rod. There we go. A hammer with reinforced two. Our lumber axe requires the broadhead axe, the large plate, and iron tough rod or a tough rod. And I used paper tough binding, and the reason is that it adds a modifier. So we have one extra modifier on this lumber axe than we would normally have. Normally we would have just three, but now we can have four. Same thing for the excavator, the large plate, the tough rod, and the excavator head. And now we have our excavator with four modifiers. I don't know if I'll actually use that, but there wasn't anything else I ever really needed. Um, there wasn't any important traits for them to have, many of the other things. So maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't. I would actually have liked to have had it on my sword, but oh well. Let's see here. My axe requires an axe head and a tool rod. And finally, our shovel. Iron tool rod and the shovel head. So, how do we get these tools to have the flux modifier? Well, we can add flux capacitors to them. And flux capacitors are basically batteries for thermal expansion 3. Um, for a long time they didn't have batteries, they just had the redstone energy cell, but now they have batteries that can be charged in the energetic infuser, and it can power most of the machines, I think. So, you know, it's handy if you want to take it with you and use it, or just keep a source of power in case you run out for some reason. So, here we go. We're going to need five of these. It's lead, copper, redstone, and sulfur. I'm going to use up my thermal expansion sulfur first. One, two, three, four, five tools. I'm going to make one more to use as a battery, actually. So we'll just use that. So we go back over to our tool forge, put our shovel in here. We've added the flux modifier. Still needs to be charged, but it's ready to be. Let me go start charging one while I make the other tools, and then you can see it in action. So we'll charge the shovel. Alright, so the excavator, the lumber axe and our hammer. So it takes a while to charge, but it will charge eventually. Let's go take a nap to make those things outside die. Well, except for the spider, I'll have to kill him myself. Flux is a much more reliable way to keep your tools durable than the auto repair. The auto repair is quite slow. Alright. Get rid of all these things that spawn in the night. Ooh, Enderman. Oh, he ran away. Oh well. And we'll check out our new shovel. 
And I'll start charging the excavator, I guess. Durability 119529. 119529. 119049. So doesn't really use up that much. Um, a fully charged tool lasts a very, very long time. So, you know, flux is just a very handy thing to put on your tools and it's not expensive at all. So, okay, so there's the energetic infuser which we can use to charge our tools. I'll check the time, see how we're doing. Um, this is probably going to wrap up with this episode. Um, we'll see if, um, yeah, probably going to wrap up this episode. We'll see you next time. Okay, so we do have plenty more time actually. So I thought I'd show you something from Extra Utilities. It's a backpack, pretty much like our Project Red one, but it holds way more stuff. But it was too expensive to make in the early game. We can make it now. It's called a Golden Bag of Holding. And it requires four, <clears throat> sorry, three gold ingots, a block of gold, a chest, and four pieces of wool. Things we did not have when we made that Project Red backpack. So, a golden bag of holding is a double chest rather than a single chest. So, I can hold even more stuff when I go mining now. So, I can stay gone even longer. So, that should be helpful. Alright, so... It takes quite a while to charge your tools the first time, but they stay charged pretty well after that, so... Alright, I'm going to go think about what else I want to make in this episode. Um, I'll be back when I think of that. Okay, I'm back. So, I decided to make a Magnum Torch from Extra Utilities. A Magnum Torch will keep hostile mobs from spawning within a radius of 64 blocks from the torch. So, it's great for keeping monsters from spawning near your base. And if you really need mobs, you can just run a few, you know, you can run a few chunks down and they'll still be there. So, uh, I find it very handy for keeping creepers away from the base, spiders from crawling on the roof and being annoying all the time. So, um, a magnum torch is not cheap, but we can afford it now, I think. So, a magnum torch requires five chandelier and a potion of healing and a potion of regeneration. Now a chandelier requires a diamond and two pieces of gold and some torches. So that's ten pieces of gold and five diamonds we'll need for these five chandeliers. I had to spend some time in the nether because we had to make potions. You need a brewing stand to make potions which requires a blaze rod and the potions that we were going to make required a gas tier. I got one and it also required a glistering melon to make the potion of healing. Now the recipe says that it requires instant health 2 and regen regeneration 2 but I think we can use just the one potion. So I'm going to try it and see what happens. Our chandelier, our wood, regeneration, healing. It is not happy. All right. Looks like I do need a potion of instant health 2 and regeneration 2. All right. I don't remember how to make that, so I'll be right back. Okay, so to get the healing and regeneration potion part two, you add glowstone. So, all right, we'll get that in there. There we go. Instant health two, regeneration two, instant health two. I'll put the others in there. All right, now we should be able to make a magnum torch. And it's still not happy. It wants wood, not planks. I 
almost wonder if that was my problem last time. Hmm. Still seems to be complaining about things. Instant health 2, regeneration 2, 2 pieces. Okay, I don't know why it's complaining. Alright, magnum torch. There we are. So I'm just going to stick this, I don't know, here for now. I usually put it on the roof, but occasionally I take the torch down so it doesn't interfere with my ability to go hunt monsters. So, there. My base is now pretty well protected. I might even put it in the middle, actually. Just so it's more centered. But, you know what? That That's fine. Now, I wanted to put the brewing stand on this nice pretty oak wood table from Bibliocraft but unfortunately can I if I do that it does this it just sits there flat I can't use it it's for looks it's not for using so that's unfortunate I don't like the way this looks with the oak wood planks here I'll have to find something better to do but um, that's good enough for now so there we go magnum torch now one more thing I wanted to do before we go is show you that the smeltery can smelt up this gold and iron horse armor that you find. So I've already smelted up a couple pieces of gold horse armor I found while I was mining. And I'm just going to get the gold out of the rest of it. And um, I don't have any horses. I don't plan to get horses right now. Maybe. We'll see. If this is the first time I've played 1.6. I actually had horses. So I don't know. Maybe horses will be fun. I haven't seen any. I'm on a plains area, but... Oh, no, that's not true. I have seen horses, but I haven't uh, figured out how to tame them, keep them, whatever. But you can melt up horse armor. Oh, I can melt up this sword, too, by the way. I found a golden sword in the nether, and um, obviously it's not a very durable sword. I'd rather have the gold out of it, so I will take that. Alright, well, that's all for this episode. Next time when we come back, I will... I don't really know. I'll think of something. Catch you later.